Dave Parody here with another slide makeover video podcast based on the ideas in my book, The Visual Slide Revolution. Today we're continuing to talk about making Excel spreadsheet data a whole lot more meaningful to your audience. See, typically here's what we see. We see somebody took uh, an Excel spreadsheet that did a bunch of calculations and simply copy and pasted it onto a slide it's overwhelming. There's way too much information here and what a presenter typically does is takes a laser pointer and waves it around trying to focus people on specific numbers. Meanwhile they're confused by everything else that's going on. So last time we talked about how to use a summary table to pull out only the numbers that you really want and to show uh, direction using arrows. Today we want to focus on Again, this set of data where we're talking about how the actual results compare to what the results were planned to be. So our variance from actual to plan. And we notice that um, we're a fair bit below plan. Below plan on the revenue, so the incoming is, is lower. And our costs are higher than the plan. So you put those two together in the bottom line, here uh, using the accounting term EBITDA, uh, the bottom line, we are behind plan by a fair amount. So that's what we want to focus people on. And what I want to do is to show you how we can do that visually. So let me show you the slide that I put together. You know, folks, our concern here is that we're a fair bit behind plan. Now, there's two reasons for that. Uh, first thing that's contributing to that issue is that our revenue is lower, especially in the services and maintenance area. And then finally, the cost side because lower revenue, expect lower cost, actually higher costs are showing up. So let's see what we're looking at here. So on the revenue side, if we compare how we're doing against plan and each of the contributions of these areas, our product revenue is actually above plan, which is great. So you've done a great job on the product sales. The problem is the next two areas. So when we take a look at our services, that brings us down a long way. We're well behind on our services uh, revenue plan and our maintenance makes that even further. Uh, an issue. So in total on the revenue side, we are behind plan by almost $900,000. That is a huge gap and we're going to have to address that. We're going to talk in the presentation later on about the specific uh, initiatives we have to try to reverse that trend. So revenue is certainly down. Now you can catch up bottom line if you keep your expenses low. Here's the challenge. When we took a look at our expenses compared to our plan, our cost of goods sold well above plan. That really is an area we're going to have to address because if we're selling a lot less, our cost of goods should be a lot less. Hasn't been the case. Even if you look at our revenue being higher in the product area, our cost of goods sold shouldn't have been this high. Now we did recoup a little bit on the operating it was a little lower, but it should have been a lot lower given the less activity that's going on, especially because services and maintenance are more operating expense related. In total, our expenses were 275000 above where we plan to be. So you put those two together, and here's the bottom line picture. Our bottom line is lower than we expected by over $1.17 million. So uh, yes, you have a question, you wanted to get into some numbers, absolutely. Let me go right into the spreadsheet and we can talk about some specific numbers that you're asking about. Now see, I can go through and we can go into the specifics that people want us to go through. When we're done, simply exit the spreadsheet and we go back to our presentation. So you see how what I've done in this slide is I have made the uh, issue the, the whole issue about being behind plan very visual and people can see what areas are contributing and what our bottom line is. I've also given the opportunity to be able to link directly to that spreadsheet. If people wanted to get into deep into the numbers, which does happen sometimes, I can immediately go to that spreadsheet. Instead of just throwing the entire thing up and then waving the laser pointer, I've made it visual, I've made it impactful, and it's much easier to understand. So before we talk about the lessons uh, from today's makeover, just a reminder, you want more information on the book, go to www.visualslideRevolution.com. More information on my training workshops, consulting services, uh, videos, and other resources, go to my main web website, www.thinkoutsidetheslide.com. So our lessons for making Excel data more meaningful, first, show what you've done, the calculations that you've done in Excel, the numbers, the results, visually instead of just as numbers. So two ways to do this. One is compare what you've cre calculated to what you expected or what the standard was. Now in my case what I did is I graphed it against uh, 
you know, compared to our plan. You could also have simply uh, used a column chart and drawn a dashed line to say, here's where we wanted to be. Did we get above or below where we wanted to be? So that's something that is always helpful to people because now they can see where are they visually compared to what they were supposed to do. If you have a series of data over time, graph the trend. So is the trend up? Is the trend down? Is it flat? Show that data over the last I don't know, four quarters, 12 months, two years, five years, whatever it is. But show those calculations visually instead of just the numbers, actually show people a picture. When you're going to show people a picture, always make sure you build, as you saw me do in this makeover, build that graph piece by piece so that you can talk about, interpret, discuss each of those items. If you just throw up the graph all together, completely built, it becomes difficult for people to focus on what you're saying because they're trying to interpret the different pieces of the graph. They come back to you and they haven't heard your explanation. So use the animation tools in PowerPoint to build that graph piece by piece. And finally, um, one of the ways to make it visual is to be able to link directly to that spreadsheet. So I used a hyperlink to link to the base spreadsheet, which allowed me to add that interactive component because somebody asked a question says, well, how did you get that number or where did that one come from? No problem. Let's link to it. N once they have asked the question, you can do that link easily because they're now wanting to look at the detail. They have the contextual picture that you presented on the visual. Now they want to look at the detail. So use a hyperlink to link directly to the spreadsheet so you can do that detailed discussion. Now you won't always use that link because not everybody wants to get into the details, but it's there if you need it. So when you're using Excel spreadsheet data, instead of simply throwing the whole spreadsheet on the slide, use the lessons in today's makeover to show how it the data impacts them and show them visually with a graph and allow for that hyperlink to get into the detailed discussion if you need to. This has been Dave Parody with another slide makeover video podcast.